Landboards presents DDS Signal Generator Fix. So I bought one of these cheap signal generators on eBay. Uh, seems like a nice unit, fairly well built, but I started having some problems with it. The channel 1 jack, and I hadn't ran it many times, just a few times. The channel 1 jack on the front was intermittent, kind of flaky, and as I used it more and more, it just got worse and worse. So I took the unit apart, uh, took the bottom off the unit, and then unscrewed the card from inside of it, and replaced the PNC connector with a good quality Amphenol connector, and uh, that worked fine. I had to take a, a X-Acto knife to the hole, the cutout through the front, but that was it, because it's a little bit higher up. The channel one connector that I replaced is the center connector of the three here. You notice it's a little bit higher up. This is the area that I had to cut back with the X-Acto knife to help it fit. Could be a little bit higher and it would still be fine. The BNC connector that was on the card was a little bit shaky. I couldn't really see what the problem was, but the one I replaced it with is definitely a lot solider. It's quality Amphenol part. Um, not a cheap part though. If the unit had used three of these, it probably would have had been a lot more expensive unit. The unit comes with this little circuit card that plugs into the back that has external connections on it. The external card plugs into the spot marked TTL here. I'm a little bit concerned about using it because it seems kind of flimsy and I'm afraid it might break off or worse than that break the chassis, but I don't have any place to put it either. The display is a two line, looks like by 16 character display, and there's some buttons and a knob that affect the readings and the positions. I haven't quite figured it all out, but I'll press some buttons and maybe you can get an idea for how it operates. It's a little harder to make out the display here. Um, it's quite a bit better contrast ratio in person. It looks like you can set all sorts of sweep and uh, related things like that. It has an external input, so it looks like it's triggerable as well. Um, like I said, I don't really know much about how it works. The shift key gives you the item that's above in black text. So for instance, shift the upper left key would switch between channel one and channel two and uh, shifting to the upper right above the arrow would be the set key. I looked around a bit for an um, online tutorial or some operator's manual. I couldn't find a whole lot that explained it. Um, used, I've used a couple of signal generators before, so some of it is fairly clear, but I'm by no means feeling like I'm a master of the of the setup. You can turn the outputs off and on there as well by shifting the bottom right. The knob looks like it moves between the positions of the item you've selected at the moment. Let's take a look at the eBay sales site for the for the unit and see what the listed features are. Um, let's kind of just skip past the English language issues here. Uh, it is a DDS generator, means it's digitally synthesized the signal. Uh, MHS 5200A may be a key if we're looking for some information about it. There might be some other information out there. Yeah, it does seem to have a big uh, FPGA inside of it, not too big. Microprocessor, yes, there's all those things that are listed there. Uh, says the top line of the display shows the current frequency, and the other ones show the parameters or functions. So, um, seems to be true, although not a lot of detail. Here's the list of features from the website. It can do arbitrary waveforms. I haven't tested that. There must be a way to put them in there. I suspect that's what the USB in the back is for. Uh, dual channel. I've only tried out one of the channels. I don't know if the other one's as flaky as this one. It didn't feel like the connector was as loose. Uh, TTL connections on the back as well. So we've seen all that and a USB interface. Although the unit's listed as a 25 megahertz operation device, uh, lists those frequencies here and states optional, so I'm not quite sure what exactly that means. And then every frequency listed below that or in all options is up to six megahertz. Um, not quite sure exactly why that's the case. Uh, the frequency error says five parts per million and that the frequency stability is plus or minus one part per million. Uh, it'd be interesting to test that. I wonder what the accuracy of that statement is. Here are some more of the parameters, in particular square wave 10% uh, overshoot. Um, it does have duty cycle adjustment. I did mess with that. It uh, seems to do these things. I haven't tried the arbitrary waveform. I'm not quite sure one kilobyte how much usefulness that would be, but maybe it'd be good enough. 
looks like it has some frequency counter abilities as well. Um, probably this is coming in the rear connector, or connector although I don't know that. <clears throat> it also looks like it has 10 memories. Uh, there is a USB connector on the back that does USB to serial apparently at 57.6k baud. Uh, protocol is interesting using the command line and the agreement public. Not quite sure what that means, but maybe if I did some web searching for MHS 5200A, I'd find something. The channel one connector that I replaced. Thanks for watching the channel our video, one connector and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You notice it's a little bit higher.